بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه In this session we want to focus on one reality which is rooted in a reflection on the hadith of intention. When we look at the fuqaha, they understand the hadith of intention as serving as a principle which governs action. The hadith of intention which is related by Omar and is found in Bukhari and Muslim is looked upon as being the foundation for the qaida fiqiyya. For the legal maxim, which is translated as such, al umur bi maqasidiha, or all affairs are governed by their intention and aims. In this case, then, an affair, in order for it to have some sense of purpose, has to have somewhat overall vision that it's aiming to achieve or to realize. And this is what is lacking in the Muslim community in our approach to education and our approach to spiritually guiding people. In many instances, we're devoid of an overall picture. And to say that to worship Allah wa ta is the goal, we can agree. But within that reality, there's a series of other objectives and tactics which have to be in place in order to be able to fulfill that lofty aim. Right? How does that translate into everyday life? Is the challenge that many of us have to be able to communicate to ourselves and to our children and to those who are coming into the deen without having an understanding. And for those who have lost the commitment, who have lost the energy, who have fallen into a moment of question and desperation, a moment of doubt. The da'wah as is cannot con continue to exist without a worked out vision as to what direction is going in. Firstly, when the human being as the individual is not the focus of the da'wah, and the family is not the focus of the da'wah, and the community is not the focus of the da'wah, then in that instance, we left the model that was left before by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So there has to be some way to be able to direct our activities and our energies to building up individuals and building up families and building up communities so that those individuals and those relationships serve as a model of what Iman is embodied. Hafiz bin Rajab, he reminds us, by quoting an ayah of the Quran in reference to this hadith of intention, which is related by Amir al Mu'minin al Abi Hafs, Omar bin al Khattab, Kala Samiatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yakulu in the Mala Amalu bin Niyat, when Namali Kuli and Brim Manawa, Femen Kenneth Hijra to Ilullah, Ilullahi wa Rasuli, Fahijra to Hu, Ilullahi wa Rasuli. ومن كانت هجرته للدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى محاجر إليه رواه البخاري ومسلم رواه البخاري ومسلم When we look at this hadith of intention is translated as such that it was related from Amir al-Mu'minin Abi Hafs Umar bin Khattab who said رضي الله عنه I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying actions are only by intentions and each man has only that which he intends. Whoever's immigration is for Allah and his Messenger, then his immigration is for Allah and his Messenger. Whoever's immigration is for some worldly gain which he can acquire or a woman he will marry, then his immigration is for that for which he immigrates. The hadith is related by Bukhari and Muslim. These things, marrying, enter into relationships, life, is all allowable. But in this case, the hadith is separating between those who are devoting their activity and their affairs, their sacrifice, their movement for Allah and His Messenger. And those who have another intention, those who may undertake that migration, that journey toward Allah and His Messenger, but their intention is for some other gain. This is the difficulty. Especially in the da'wah. 
the difficulty of how to maintain a pure intention. Hafid bin Rajab, he tells us, Minkum may yuridu dunya wa minkum may yuridu akhirah quoting the Quran and in reference to this hadith. That the intention, right? The intention may convert itself to be such that it takes us in a different direction than the other direction that we were maneuvering in. And that's moving toward Allah. Without a vision overall of what we want to see in the community, without an understanding of the role of the individual, the role of the family, the role of the community overall, the role of the ummah in our address, in our effort, in our activity, right, in our motion, then the motion that we engage in is one which doesn't seem to have consistency in the bigger picture. Is one which is well intended. It may be one of self-preservation. It may be one of seeking one's due pay in the event of doing work in which you need to what? In, in which you need to survive. But if that is the end, right, of the da'wah at the end of the day, if that is the aim of the da'wah at the end of the day, preservation of self, then in this case, we have a misunderstanding even of the maqasid of the sharia. Because preservation of self cannot take place without a preservation of the deen. Not in the Muslim understanding and in the Muslim consciousness. Preservation of the deen is the priority because preservation of the deen is which ra is that which raises the quality of life for the individual which allows preservation of self to exist. So this is the case. This is what we're looking toward now. This is what we're asking. What is the vision and what is the direction that the people of da'wah, the people of ilm, the people in leadership, what is the direction that we're moving in? And how does that pan out at the end of the day to the quality of life for the individual Muslim, the community, and the ummah overall? How can we take our actions to account so we can see if that goal that we were aiming at is one which what? Is working or not? Is it something that's working? Is it something that's producing? Is it something that we can take ourselves to account? Is it something that we can refine? Whatever our activities are. So the challenge then is to reorganize dawah so that it is rooted in such a way that it comes back to building the individual, building the community, building the ummah. And when it fails to build the individual, build the community, build the ummah, and it's just a contest between names and institutions and organizations and the pursuit of wealth, then we lost. Minkum may yuridu dunya wa minkum may yuridu al And this is what? A call to the people of Dawah to put their hands together to come up with a vision of how to be able to build the next generation so that it has a sense of purpose within the Islamic context. So that calls for a reanalyzing of what is the role of education, what is the purpose of the masjid, what is the purpose of lecturing, what is the purpose of counseling, what is the purpose of zakat, what is the purpose of sadaqah, what is the purpose of projects, what is the maqasid here, or what are the maqasid that we're aiming at. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَفْرَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ نَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَنَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ